and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. So today, um, as requested, going to have another look at some more of this year's World Sudoku Championship coming up very shortly. Um, the instruction booklet's been published and we're going to try one of the example puzzles again just to see how they work. Um, so I've sort of flipped forward to round seven individual. Um, this is a 45 minute round during the championship for 450 points. So it's clearly 10 points a minute if you were planning to finish it. Now bear in mind very few people finish rounds at the World Championships, although some do sometimes. So um, you can see that for the classics, then you'd be expected at that pace to do them in three and a half and three minutes, then four minutes, three minutes, six and a half. And the hardest puzzle in the round, the double scattered takes eight minutes. So let's just have a look at some of the rules. Um, the specials are a 159 Sudoku. Disjoint groups, this is a bit of a classic style where no digit can appear in the same position in different 3 by 3 blocks. Biggest neighbours, I don't really know that one. Um, we've got the double scattered there, this is the high tariff puzzle, um, where I think all the grey cells contain the numbers 1 to 9 twice, in this case, because they look like there's about 18 of them. And non-consecutive, these are beautiful sometimes, so maybe we'll have another, a look at that one a bit later. Um, equal Sudoku, in which case, in each dotted cage, the sum of the odd digits is equal to the sum of the even digits. Now remember, in this booklet, it's only an example booklet, so we do have the answers next to, uh, next to the puzzles. And then outside Sudoku, where the digits outside the grid have to be in the first three cells from that direction inside the grid. Oh, it's still going. Triangle sums. A digit placed on a triangle is the sum of the two digits that are placed in the neighbouring cells on the short sides of the triangle. What does that mean? Okay, so this seven is the sum of two and five on the side of the triangle here. A square consists of two such triangles, but you don't know which way round they are. That's, that's a bit vicious. Um, you're probably best to work on the fact that if you that each square then is the sum or is half the sum of all the digits around it. That's that's how I'd approach that one. And that's the end of round seven. So tons of different puzzle styles there. We're going to go back to the first variant they listed. That's the 159 Sudoku. So digits in the first column, which is grey, indicate in which column digit 1 is placed in that respective row. So digits in the fifth column indicate where you find digit 5 in that row, and digits in the ninth column show where digit 9 is in that row. So don't look at the solution, I'm not. So here's the puzzle loaded up in our software. You can have a go under the screen. Um, before I start, let's also make the point that our Sandwich Sudoku app is selling very well. If you haven't bought that yet, um, I think you will enjoy it. I really think it's, it's a nice piece of work and you can get it on Android Steam or from the um, Apple App Store. And uh, of course, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do. Please do this great content. Anyway, so I'm going to have a go at this puzzle. Now, remember, the rule is this, that digits in the first column tell you the column in which the one is placed in that row, and the same for fives and nines. So let's just start here looking at fives. Ones, fives, and nines are clearly very important in this puzzle. We've got fives in row one and three, so the five in the first box must be there. And what that means is that the digit 1 is in the fifth column, so that goes there. Um, 9 is in the third column, so its marker in the ninth column is 3. You understand what I'm doing there then? This is telling me where the 1 is in column 5, this is telling me where the 5 is in column 1, and this is telling me where the 9 is in column 3. So that's how this works. It's a bit of a complex um, rule to be honest. Now, the one in this row, we don't know, but we can see the five is in column eight, so we must get an eight there. So let's just pick up the things that are really 
doable early on. Now we've got a pair of sixes in the central row of boxes. That's going to put the six there. And that's saying that the one is in column six there. That's nice. Um, what about down here? Yep, similar down here. I think they've set this up to give us a start. So there's got to be a three here because of this three, this three, and this three. And that three is saying that the five is in column three. So that goes there. That puts a five here, which is just telling you about itself that the five is in column five. That doesn't help us with the others. Um, one, however, we've got a pair of ones. So the one in this row is in column four. Um, that gives us an eight and two to fill that box. Six and seven. And we can do these because the nine is in column six and the five is in column seven. So as long as we remember the rule we're applying, this could be a fairly straightforward puzzle, especially with this many givens in it. Um, that has to be a six, but we could have got that from where that five was anyway, so I could have filled that in earlier. Um, those are a three and five pair. Now here we have a one and a nine, and that's quite interesting because it means that for one of them, the one will be over here. Yeah, you see, one of these must be a one or a nine. <clears throat> and that says that the one in that row is placed over here in column nine, wherever the nine appears. So we know the one in this box is in one of these two cells, and that allows us to place the one in column eight. So we now know that that must be an eight, saying the one is in column eight in that row. <clears throat> Four, one, nine. So this has to be a three. We get seven and two, because we knew that this is a one nine pair down here. Six, just normal Sudoku now, finishing off the boxes. Um, now the one was in column two, yes. Here, the one's in column seven. So we don't know for sure which of these is four and nine. Maybe there's a way of knowing, but I don't think it's probably all that important at the moment. Eight, six, three, two, seven. So we've got four and one. These two are five and nine. Now that one is in column three. Six, eight, so the ones are all placed. <clears throat> so one of these is a seven. So one of these has to be a two. Put a five and nine there. No, I'm not sure. No, this is six, eight up there. That's good. This is either a four or a nine. Seven must be in one of these two cells. And seven here is in column seven or nine. So seven in this box must be in column eight. Um, that can't be a one. Hmm. Now, where do we go next? Ah, oh, look, sorry, ordinary Sudoku. This cell is now a naked single. So we can put the three and five in there. Rows are very easy to finish off once once you know where the ones, fives, and nines are, obviously. Um, it's not necessarily always so easy to make a jump into a new column or row. This has to be two or a nine, but we don't know which way around. Seven, five, two, three, six, one, eight. <coughs> So it, it's annoying this. I mean, we're nearly done, but I don't quite know how these rows are going to resolve themselves. We have a lot of symmetry going on, um, which is actually means that it's quite difficult to finish off. One of these must be a two because the nine, there is a nine in row in column two over there. So one of those is a two. That means there's a two in that column. Um, one of those is a four and the other one's a two. That's obvious. Now, where do the nines go? If that was a seven, that would put the nine here. Four, two, that's quite possible. Nine there, we'd have an eight. Oh, look, eight, that's not possible. Okay, this 
I know it could be a nine, because eight could be here. In fact, eight is here. Look at that eight, and that eight, and that eight. I should have seen that a while ago. So eight's there, that puts nine there. I think now, sorry, that's a four. I think now we're finished off. And I mean, there may have been other ways of getting to that conclusion a little earlier. So this is saying that the five is in column two. That enables us to finish off those fives. This is saying that, um, well, we have two, which we know is in the end column there. Right, and now that becomes a four, that resolves this pair. Um, as usual with these example puzzles, this isn't the hardest example of the genre, and even though the, the competition puzzle is meant to take the experts four minutes, I would expect it to be significantly different from that one. Maybe we'll, when the uh, actual puzzles have been published in a couple of weeks, maybe we'll come back and take a look at the puzzle for that one. So that's a 159 Sudoku. I'm not, I don't think that's one of my exact favorites of uh, the variations, but it's always an interesting one and it kind of plays with your mind a bit in terms of how you solve it. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you again soon on Cracking the Cryptic and bye.